Hello again and welcome to Pick Yourself, the podcast that helps you build a meaningful electronic music career. If your goal is to create and release outstanding music on respected labels, get better bookings and grow a tribe of true fans instead of just social followers, then this show is for you. My name is Philip, thanks for tuning in and now let's get right into today's episode. Welcome to episode 51 of Pick Yourself. And I am, as always, super excited to have you here with me again. Thanks for tuning in. I know you had to wait quite a long time for this episode to come out, but I promise it's a good one. We are going to talk about artist bios, one of the most essential pieces that every artist needs to have in place for his or her PR efforts, for everything that has to do with music marketing, for everything that has to do with promoting your music generally online. Now, in all honesty, I am not an expert in writing artist bios. I think that's a super difficult thing to do. Writing about texts or bio texts is definitely not my strength. And even if I come from a marketing background and I know what theoretically has to be inside such a text, it still is quite hard. And this is why I've decided to bring an expert on the show. This expert is Dee Cunning. She is an incredibly smart person, a super good writer, and she specializes in writing artist bios and about texts. You can find her at aboutitude.com, and I hope you enjoy this interview with her. Now, before we jump into the conversation itself, I do have some very exciting news. First of all, there is a brand new website. You can go to pickyourself.com. This is now the main domain for everything related to the podcast, to the other types of content that I put out, so blog posts and also video content. Just go to pickyourself.com. I would love for you to check it out to see if there's something interesting for you. It's way more organized. You can sort through different categories and find exactly the type of content that helps you best. And yeah, overall, if you have any feedback, if you would wish for certain topics to be included, then just drop me an email, philip at pickyourself.com. I always listen to what you, as the listener or the reader, suggest to me, and I'm very open to suggestions. So please just hit me up, philip at pickyourself.com. I would love to hear from you. Then the next big thing that I want to mention here is that I'm working on my very first online course that is helping upcoming producers with finishing songs, with putting out better music and putting that out more efficiently. If that is generally something that you're interested in, you can go to pickyourself.com slash beta and apply to become a member of my yeah team of the chosen few is what I call them. These are the people that will help me build this course because I want to test some ideas and needless to say, you will have massive benefits if you join early and yeah, become just a very close member of my little community. So go to pickyourself.com slash beta and you will find all the information about this upcoming course in there. Okay, that's it for now. I would love to jump into the conversation right now and I wish you a lot of success for the rest of the year. I will probably not put out another episode before the year closes, but I do have a lot of great content lined out already. I have guests that are lined up. It just has taken a little bit more time than usual due to COVID. And uh, this is also why the conversation was done via Skype and the shitty audio on Skype. But my assistant has put a lot of effort into editing this and to making the stuff sound a little bit better. And um, I hope you still enjoy it. So let's go ahead and jump into the conversation. Enjoy. All right. Welcome to the show, Dee. I'm super happy to have you as my guest for this upcoming series. How are you doing? Thank you for inviting me. I'm doing good. I'm quite new to this podcast format, but I'm really excited. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're more the type of writer, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Your strength is not necessarily in speaking then, but uh, since we know each other personally, this is always quite helpful for these types of things. Um, exactly. Yeah, uh, I would love to hear from you uh, also out of my own interest. How did you end up writing artist bios and like what's your general interest in writing? How did that come about? So generally um, with writing, I started about seven years ago. I was doing my French degree at the time and um, 
I decided I was interested in fashion and I wanted to start writing about fashion. So I just started writing for some publications on that. And then after university, I was more interested in music. And suddenly it kind of all culminated when I moved to Berlin and I got my first official job as a copywriter. And since then I've been just freelancing and I started up my my own kind of online presence on um, dcunning.com and people started being interested in can you write my bio and please help me I'm really struggling with making myself sound interesting so I did a couple um, just like um, on the off chance kind of thing and I started getting then a reputation for writing artist bios and about text and all those things so um, more recently I kind of became my specialty <laughs> Nice, nice. <laughs> but how did how did techno artists find out about you as a writer? I mean, how did that connection happen? Um, I think really I'm I'm doing uh, bios for all kinds of artists, so like designers and uh, yeah, music producers as well. But there's like a full spectrum of creatives who are kind of interested in uh, a more kind of creative bio text. And I happen to have some friends who are music producers. Um, Yeah, it's all just word of mouth. Um, but of course, because I'm I'm DJing a little bit as well, so I'm, I have a lot of interest in in music. So kind of yeah, I gravitate towards that, I guess. <laughs> nice, nice. I personally always struggle with writing bios for myself, and that is pretty strange because usually I have no issue with writing. I also have no issue with like marketing things. I do write a lot of website copy anyway for my own studio website and also for the Pick Yourself website and everything. But every time when it comes to writing something truly about myself and uh, something that is like a little bit more personal also maybe, that comes super hard to me. Do you have any idea why that is? Yes, um, I think people just hate to sing their own praises. It's really, I, I also find it for myself, um, it's really uncomfortable to be thinking, oh, like, what are the best things about myself? What are the most useful things I can tell people to uh, sell my work and all of those things? And I, I think that writers objectively just know the right questions to ask. So I've worked with a lot of clients who were completely struggling and what to say about themselves. And they didn't know what to expect out of our, out of our meeting, our like kind of consultation call. So I just came in with some like kind of out of the box questions, which kind of surprised them. And they ended up revealing a lot more about themselves than they, they thought was important. And that kind of helps build the, um, the kind of background material for the text. So yeah, I think It's really just having somebody to ask you the right questions and give you that kind of sounding board. Interesting. Uh, how is that? How is that working? Do you have like a fixed template of questions that you bring into these kinds of meetings? Is there some fixed procedure behind that, or do you just make them up on the fly? Uh, it's kind of a mixture. I obviously I tend to look at their work to start with to see like what jumps out at me, maybe what they've already said about themselves and their existing about text and then I just kind of ask questions like what is the what is the best moment of your career so far what what really really sticks out in your memory like what's the best feedback you had about your work and these kind of like emotionally centered questions and that's when you really get into the important uh, information which builds the text okay I understand with upcoming artists oftentimes they just don't have a lot of career highlights do you have any specific tips for them what can they write about if they do it themselves yeah um i think uh, a good technique i have a kind of formula for if you're writing your own bio it's the who what where when why system <laughs> so <laughs> which, we, which we somehow it sounds familiar to everyone <laughs> sure you have your own take on that in uh, regards to artist bios Yeah, I think I think this is probably a formula that everybody learned at school, like when having to write anything. And basically, it's a storytelling kind of framework. And um, so, yeah, writing your own bio is telling your own story, ultimately. So you've just got to pick apart, you know, where you come from, like where, when you started, what is driving your work, all of these kind of base questions which help to build the story. And I think even if you don't have like a, 
you know, you haven't played at Berghain or, or like one of those moments. Mm -hmm. There are always moments that stand out to you in your kind of artistic history where you were like, wow, that really changed my direction or um, this really inspired me or this is what I want to achieve. So I think anybody can, can start with these basic questions and actually build a really compelling story. Nice. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And just to understand that correctly, so if someone, for example, has had a party night with their favorite DJ and they come home and they feel super inspired and start producing a track right after coming out of the club, would that, even though that is just a surrounding story or a little side story, would that still be something that you can bring into an artist bio simply because there is some connection to your work? Yeah, I think so. Um, I really think it's about finding those moments that really kind of fueled your your career or your artistic direction. And I think this is, you know, something that people can relate to. Like everybody's had a moment where they've been in a room with somebody that they really aspire to. Um, and why not include that in, 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 in part of your personal story? I think so. Just pick out something that matters to you or a few okay, things great. that matters to you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So in our community of Pick Yourself listeners, um, I would say that the majority is not um, yeah, doing music as a full-time income. Most of them are aspiring to become music producers that can make some kind of living off that. And then we have also some professionals who listen to the show. What would you say is, in terms of artist bio, the difference between the first group and the second one? Hmm. Um, I think... Of course, there is a difference in terms of maybe what content you want to include. Like if you're already a successful producer or DJ, you would obviously have a lot of kind of uh, achievements and accolades that you'd want to you want to share. I do think that really in terms of writing a, a story about yourself, there, there isn't much difference because how I tackle um, about texts and bios is I, I usually try to create an atmosphere um, try to give a feeling of the music you know for example if you if your whole sound is inspired by maybe like the place you grew up in like say for example like if you grew up in the forest and you you have all this kind of like dark like natural natural sounds why not kind of set your story there and I think that could go across the board whether you're successful or not so I think really it's important to build that atmosphere and kind of bring the sound of your music into the text That is fascinating because atmosphere is exactly the thing that I also, when I uh, do mixing and mastering work for people, I always focus on enhancing that atmosphere that the track brings across. And I find it super interesting that you do the same thing with artist bios. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> because also it's uh, it's in line with the visual art. So the photos that people make combined with the artwork of albums, EPs and singles. And that together with the sound itself and the artist bio, that somehow yeah, then creates one atmospheric picture, I would say. Exactly. And um, this is why uh, I, I kind of despair a little bit when I'm going through SoundCloud and I see a lot of great artists and um, their music is just so amazing. And then I get to their SoundCloud bio and it's, it's just usually very generic. Like this is when I started playing music. Now I'm doing this and it's all very linear and very kind of, boring i hate to say boring um no but that's that's completely true yeah i've actually um, had a similar comment by one of our uh, listeners and readers andy writes most artist bios i read on soundcloud come across as bragging or boring even if they're really well written and this makes it hard for me to come up with my own because i don't want to come across like that but then yeah i also don't want to sound boring so do you have any tips for me maybe we can answer that question immediately because you were just speaking about that <laughs> yes yeah, so to continue on on that kind of uh, flavor of things a lot of artists take the word bio very literally and they they literally write a biography for themselves and i would say that this kind of soundcloud text is not the kind of space for this um you're trying to grab somebody's attention it doesn't have to be long it doesn't have to be including all the facts so yeah that can sound that can sound boring just as somebody who hasn't bothered to write much at all could sound boring so i think just it's just going back to creating that atmosphere and and pulling the pulling the kind of melody of your music into into words yeah yeah And that's why it's really important to kind of sit down and, and go through maybe how you you want to brand yourself or how you are branding yourself and try to reflect that in the text. And just 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 remember that 
yes, it's not it's not the be all and end all to have a well written bio next to your music, but it certainly helps create more of an impression and an impact. Yeah, let's stick with that for a second. How important do you think an artist bio is overall? I mean, it's is it a nice to have thing or beyond that? Uh, maybe I'm a little biased because I'm a writer, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I I certainly do get feedback from my clients who who say, you know, like finally um, I feel like there's a way to define myself. Like I can describe what my work is and people understand. People can actually see me. I've had all these kind of comments. So I definitely think it's important just to just to tell like the story of the artist and not just here is my music. Because ultimately, if people like your music, they want to know more about you and more about where the music came from. So I think it's important for sure. Of course, it's it's not it's not the be all and end all, as I said. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, to me also, I want to find out more. When I stumble upon an artist that makes super interesting music, I definitely start digging in and read their artist bio and then also try to find interviews that they've given in blogs and magazines or podcasts. Exactly. And this can some, sometimes be really disappointing because if that person comes across as someone who's just bragging, for example, which is also something that Andy mentioned in his question. So how do I make sure that I don't sound like somebody who's just bragging about um, themselves? So this can sometimes be super disappointing and sometimes it can even deepen my relationship with that artist. So this is super fascinating. For sure. And I think actually to the, to the point about bragging, um, I would always recommend that your bio was written in the third person. It's on a practical level. It means that obviously like venues and you know media can, can just copy and paste your bio into whatever they're saying about you. But also it allows you to kind of mildly boast. You don't have to go crazy, but you can say good things about yourself without saying, I did this and I did that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't sound like me, me, me. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. On On the one hand, I definitely think it helps to detach yourself a little bit from that message. But on the other hand, like everyone else knows that you are the person writing about yourself. So why do you write in the third person? So this is something that a lot of people struggle with, I think. Do you have a tip on how to deal with that mental barrier of, yeah, I don't want to write about myself in the third person and so on? Well, I think that actually, um, if if I'm reading, say, like a, a bio of, of a successful DJ, and it's, it's a well-written one, or even if it's not, I wouldn't necessarily think that they wrote it themselves. You know, you could just have a really professional presentation. So it definitely doesn't mean you're bragging or, or that you're weird for writing about yourself in a third person. So yeah, I, I think just don't be afraid to to say positive things about your work because this is this is how you kind of tell more of your story. Of course, there's like a, there's a nuance to to things, but I think if you're worried about sounding too boastful then i think you know where to kind of hold the limit if you know what i mean <laughs> yeah totally would you recommend that someone else like a friend of yours uh, who's an artist then reads that bio before publishing it just to make sure that you're on like finding the sweet spot yeah i think it's always good to have a second opinion don't rely on other people to you know give the direction for your bio i think it should really come from you you know even if you're working with a professional writer and and they're writing it for you you're this you're still the person who is giving all of the content to it so um yeah <laughs> yeah that makes total sense uh for all of you who are listening to this right now if you want to post your own artist bio and get some feedback you can go to pickyourselfpodcast.com slash community and that forwards you to our private facebook group and in there this is kind of a safe space to experiment so you can for example, publish a draft of your newest artist bio and the community can give you feedback. And who knows, maybe I can invite Dee as well to give a few comments. For sure. Um, <laughs> just asking you on the fly now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, here, this is definitely something where you can experiment in a safe space without like uh, people leaving harsh comments or anything because the people inside this group, they are very, very helpful and very supportive of each other so go to pickyourselfpodcast.com slash community and yeah get some free feedback on your artist bio i will also be there and try to help you perfect so coming back to uh the writing of the artist bio let's say you have nailed this who why what how and so on how do you make sure that the style is okay of your writing so i think after that phase if you've been through that correctly you should have a page of notes 
which maybe don't make any sense or maybe they they're confusing but at least you've got all of the stuff out of your head and you've got all the facts on the table and um, I call the next step write drunk edit sober which is an Ernest Hemingway quote apparently so you take all of the all of the the notes which which can't stand up on their own they're drunk and you basically bring a sober mindset to them and and edit out all the unnecessary facts and anything that doesn't really go with the atmosphere or the brand that you're trying to share you basically start structuring it from there so bring out the most important things from those notes and start the story there and then kind of work your way through everything else you want to say great um i love this quote of write drunk edit sober it makes so much sense <laughs> now i think a lot of people struggle with finding this this fine balance between how many adjectives for example should they use how much passive voice versus active voice and things like that i mean let's not talk about the absolute details of style but do you have any like broad stroke recommendations on where they should dial in hmm uh of course i think any writer would tell you don't go overly frilly with your language you know that that kind of makes you sound pretentious or maybe like the sentences are drawing out too long you got to keep it sharp and short sentences easy to read i would say those are the most important things but also my own perspective is that um you should really try to be creative really like look at look at what you've written look at your notes and think how can i say that in a more interesting way or how can i maybe change up the sentence so that it sounds more engaging like all of these kind of considerations are really important in my opinion because that's what keeps people reading yeah i can totally relate to that if it sounds like written in a boring language then the content might be great but i'm still like not drawn into the thing it doesn't create that atmosphere that we've been talking about exactly and you don't have to i i, I would also like to say that you don't have to have like a flawless command of english or anything like that i think it's just it's more about just having fun with it and kind of keeping to your story yeah can you maybe share a story of an artist that you've worked with you don't have to mention names but like how did you approach that how did you take that from point a to point b and what was the difference that you've made happen during that transition hmm okay so um so yeah uh, one example um uh, he's a music producer and he basically um he came to me not, not knowing exactly what to write um He also he created a new moniker for himself. Uh, started a, a whole new journey as an artist, even though he had success beforehand. And his his aim was really to to kind of portray like this real authenticity, whilst kind of showing that he he has got something unique to say with his music. So I think this is this is also going back to the question we talked about before, like how to how to brag about yourself while sounding authentic. And so I really kind of scratch my head about this one for a while and um sounds like quite a task yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i came out with one of the lines is rejecting mechanical copy and paste culture for something far deeper his music is a personal exploration into the possibilities of sound so already with the nice. sentence you have um this kind of anti-mainstream feeling but you're also showing you know this is like real real soul driven music so yeah this is just one of the examples um. nice yeah that definitely sounds like the type of language where you where you stick with it and you want to find out a little bit more and then maybe also check out some other songs simply because yeah now you have to prove that you're not part of that copy paste culture and so on <laughs> exactly so when we talk about artist bios they have two different audiences i think so the first audience is the fans themselves and The other audience is journalists. Yeah. So what would you say, how important is an artist bio for journalists who you know, write, want to write about you or prepare an interview about you? I think, of course, it's important. I think everybody's bio should include the important facts, like things you want to say about yourself and you want people to learn. But I also think uh, with regards to the press, um, This is kind of getting into press release territory, which is a whole other thing, um, having your electronic press kit um, sorted out. So, yes, I think do include the important information, but don't overly stress about what journalists are 
going to learn from you because they can always ask you those questions themselves. Yeah, they, they should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because this is also part of the copy-paste culture. <laughs> exactly. Uh, don't do enough research and then just copy-paste your press release or your artist bio without changing anything. I mean, this can also be beneficial for you because you you are being displayed in the right way but also it's kind of boring for their audience so i think the starting that can be a good starting point uh, your artist bio to then ask the right questions in the follow-up for sure um i think talking from the journalist point of view because i have obviously um written about artists from the journalist point of view obviously it always helps to bring out the the kind of if they have something really atmospheric in their bio, really kind of inspiring and always like great to pull it out, but for sure, like always best to ask questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's come back to some reader questions now or listener questions. So Vivian asks about the standard length for a bio. So what do you recommend there? Uh, I would say keep it under 150 words. I think this kind of goes across the board with everything. Um, just, I think there is always space for longer biographies if you have like a website or maybe you have like a resident advisor page or something like that. But if you're just going for your SoundCloud or Beatport or whatever it is, just just <laughs> please keep it short. Does uh, it make sense to have two versions, like a longer version, and then go from that to a shorter version or the other way around? How would you approach that? Um I think yes, you can. Um, I think if you really, if you really have a lot of things to say, and especially if you're kind of thinking about the journalists and or, or having a press kit and all those things, maybe it does help to have a longer bio sketched out. But from my experience, and as also from my kind of experience as a reader, um, I rarely go to those long form bios. I think the the short form bio should tell me all I need to know in terms of just the most important facts and and the kind of atmosphere of your brand as an artist and then obviously your music should do the rest you know that's also a good point like your music is telling the biggest story um this should, this should just be like a, a kind of blurb for your story i guess yeah. Yeah, i completely agree uh, if also the problem is if you come up with a bio that's too long it almost feels like yeah you need to give people more information to then like your music which is <laughs> not what you want yeah your music should be the number one thing and then the artist provides some kind of yeah, atmosphere around that or some context i would say yeah and i think it's always good as an artist to keep some level of mystery about you even if you're going for this super authentic persona you know, like you don't have to tell everybody everything. It's good to kind of think, oh, you know, ask que for for the reader to ask questions, and maybe they'll ask them themselves when they get in contact with you. Just keep them guessing a little bit. <laughs> uh, that's a perfect segue into the next question because he <laughs> asks, um, "I'm leaning towards the more mysterious type of artist persona. What should I include in my bio if I don't want to display anything personal?" Then think about the story you're telling with your music already. Uh, really kind of get into the atmosphere that music creates and, and how you envision your persona. So if you're being mysterious, I mean, like there are plenty of uh, producers who are wearing masks and all of these things because they want to keep it to the music and keep that mystery around them. So really just, just lead with that. Um, I also I can give you an example of my my own bio um, as a oh, DJ. <laughs> I really wanted to kind of avoid this kind of linear this linear format, and also I'm not I'm not a music producer, so I really have like a, a kind of direction with my sound with, when I'm playing mixes. But that's all that's all I really want to say. So I could just I will read out I'll read it out. Go for it. <laughs> so. Um, like her leopard-clad namesake, the ancient Egyptian goddess of writing, Sasheta is an eternal storyteller. In the heady candlelight of her Berlin home and behind the altars of the city's underground venues, the British DJ weaves disparate tracks into enchanting journeys. Be the genre techno, minimal or psytrance, or the setting mystical, sci-fi or psychedelic, it is darkness that drives her. So this is this is basically... What I did, I wanted to create a lot of atmosphere and a lot of darkness and this idea of a storyteller and also the mystery of the ancient Egyptian goddess, which is what my 
DJ name is named after. So that was just one example. <laughs> yeah, but that sounds like a really big con. All yeah, um, yeah. That's an interesting point to talk about. Do you think every artist should have some kind of deep concept behind their yeah artist personality, or how do you see that? Uh, I think if you're creating music, you should you should already have a concept kind of going. So really, just to just expanding on this for your own branding purposes. Um, I know a lot of artists don't like to don't like the word branding or marketing. Um, yeah, we've sorted that out in past episodes. So yes. <laughs> this is only for the new ones here. The other ones uh, <laughs> go back to these episodes where we're sorting out a lot of these mysteries. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, it's really it's really important to have a kind of uh, direction with your sound, and and in the same way to be able to describe that direction. And it really helps, like, give a, a focus. Like, no, nobody's telling you that it has to be this way forever, but just to have some some kind of concept really helps. And also, this concept can change over time. And exactly. sometimes that word concept is also a bit too big. I think so. Not everyone, I think, needs some kind of ancient Egyptian goddess to come up with a concept. Yeah, this is just because it is in line with what you want to express musically, and so you found something that kind of resonates with that. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, this is just a, a, an idea that really inspired me because I'm a writer and um, this goddess is the goddess of writing and she, she also, you know, um, is pictured with uh, <laughs> a, a cannabis plant above her head and she's told to open the gates of heaven and all of those things. So with a musical direction on this, you can see where the kind of mystery expands from and it's just a really nice concept to play with. Um, so, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. Also, the name just sounds pretty beautiful, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's always good, yeah, if you have an artist name that uh, doesn't sound stupid. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I think that's it for artist bios right now. There's just one question left, and this is what, yeah, this is what Francisca asks. Um, at what point does it make sense to hire a professional to write an artist bio for you? Um. I would say it totally depends. You know, uh, a lot of people don't have the the extra money to put aside for a professional to do it. That's one thing, and I think it's it's definitely not necessarily if you if you have your if you have time to to put into it and to really like sketch things out and and to come up with something. But I also think that if you're constantly hitting a brick wall, it's definitely worth you know just. <laughs> just saving yourself the the time because time is money i guess <laughs> yeah definitely, definitely. <laughs> and also it is something that you can te uh, keep for quite some time i mean every couple of years you maybe want to update a few things but overall if the concept doesn't completely change then i think a bio is a kind of a lifetime investment at least for a certain yeah chapter in your artist career yeah, I, I think this is a really good point. A thing that a lot of people don't understand about about text and biotechs is that it's it's always an afterthought, or often an afterthought for people who are creatives. And actually, it's probably the most visited place on your website or your social profile. So it really matters what it says. And yes, it is it is a really great investment, and I think it's it's really worth the money if you're gonna if you're gonna get a professional to do it. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's totally fine. I also think that people benefit from a professional mix and master, but yeah, I also completely understand when people want to do it on their own and I also support them doing that. This is also what exactly. you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't share this kind of information publicly. And also for you listeners, if you want to dive into this topic a bit more and start rewriting your artist bio, Uh, Dee was so nice and put together a guest blog post on pickyourselfpodcast.com. So just go to the blog and go to her article because this is the formula that you should use when you want to write your own artist bio. And yeah, again, thank you so much for doing this, Dee. I really appreciate that. And I think a lot of our listeners will also appreciate that work. Uh, now, where can people find out a little bit more about you? Yeah, so my main website is dcunning.com and there is kind of my main portfolio and also services and everything. So you can also see about what other work I've been doing, um, what stories I've been writing and all those things. And I've also 
which is more relevant to this discussion, I recently launched a website called aboutitude.com, which combines about and attitude, so you can kind Fantastic. of get the point. That's um, a really, really good name. Thank you. Um, so this is, uh, as I understand it, it's the only dedicated about page writing service on the internet. Um, and this is basically where I'm channeling my niche for uh, writing about text right now. So please check it out and um, and get in touch with me if, you, if you're interested in um, a professionally written bio. <laughs> Super nice. Yeah, we'll <laughs> publish all those links also on our blog post. So just go to pickyourselfpodcast.com and check that out. Dee, thank you so much for being with me here on air for our listeners. I think we all appreciate the things that you've shared here. And yeah, I hope to speak to you again soon. Thank you for having me. And um, let me know if you, if you need my feedback on your bias. <laughs> Perfect. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right, now that was my conversation with Dee Cunning about artist bios and about texts. You can find more about Dee Cunning on aboutitude.com. She is a fantastic writer and if you need support, definitely consider hiring her. I think she does a great job at what she does there. Now, I am right now in the process of outlining the episodes for next year. I'm preparing a lot of content, also in video form. So if you want me to include a certain thing that you currently struggle with as an artist, then you can send me an email, just philip at pickyourself.com and you can leave a suggestion and let me know what you're struggling with. I would love to create content that helps you directly with the things that you struggle with in real life. And yeah, that's it for this year. Thank you so much for being a listener of this podcast. Thanks for your contribution. I really appreciate it. Your feedback and your questions that is definitely what keeps this podcast alive and everything that I try to achieve with Pick Yourself. So a big thank you. I will do my best to provide as much value as possible also in the next year. And yeah, hope to see you again then. Bye bye. If you don't want to miss any of the upcoming episodes, please make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app. And you can find detailed blog posts for every single episode on pickyourselfpodcast.com. Until then, see you next time. <laughs>